CSS Now is having variables without the need of SAS preprocessor. We'll see them in the next lesson. However, SAS and CSS variables, they sometimes can complement each other. But in this lesson, we will focus on SAS variables and how to use them. If we take a look at the main.css file that already include a SAS code for the alerts and also for the buttons, however, we have some repetitive code here. We see that some hex color codes are repeated. If we check as an example this code here and use the search to find it, so it exists in two places. Same for this called color of the background color and same again for this value here. Our main goal of using a preprocessor or a SAS preprocessor is minimizing a repetitive code. So to solve this problem, we should use variables. To create a variable is straightforward. Let's first move to the top of our file and add a comment variable to structure our code. A variable always begin with the dollar sign. Then for the name of the variable, let's go for danger 700. We should not use any special characters on the variable's names like this add sign or anything like that. So stick to the hyphen character or underscore to separate variables names. Otherwise, the SAS debugger will throw an error that we have an invalid syntax. All right, let's return this hyphen. And we have to add a colon, then the value of the variable. So in this case, let's take this color, the darkest red. Now we can replace the hex code color on the danger selectors on both alert and BTN selectors with the new variable danger 700. Nothing changed in the result. To see the change, let's change the value of the variable to yellow. Sorry, put your sunglasses. Sorry for the color choice. So changing color values will be from one place instead of many. Let's create variables for the other repetitive code colors. Let's start with the shades of red and create two variables, danger 200 and danger 100 for the lighter one. and find the colors within the code and replace them with the variables. We start with the first one, we find it through the code and replace it with the danger 200. Same here for the second value, find it and replace it with the danger 100 variable. And very fast, we'll do the same thing for the warnings colors. We we'll create three variables, warning 700, warning 200 and warning 100 and set their values by finding the repetitive hex codes. Find these hex colors and replace them with the variables. By achieving this result, it is like creating a specific theme following a color scheme. If, for example, we want to go to the green shade for the warning alerts and buttons, we just have to modify the value of the variables, warnings, give it a save, voila, let's return the old values. We can also add the default tag after assignment to set default variables. As an example, if I set a new value for danger variable to green within the same file, even before the original one, the variable that contained the default tag will not override the previous one. The default value will not be used. The default value is used only if there are no other assignments to this variable. Let's remove this variable. These variables here are considered global. They can be used anywhere within this style sheet. As an example, this global variable danger 700 is used within a nested selector here. We can access to the value of a global variable anywhere within this file. However, in the other side, we can also create scoped variables that appear within a selector and will only apply that selector and its children. Let's see that. We create a new variable within the alert danger within the alert danger selector with the name link color and we check this color value from the selector alert link and we use it as a value of link color and let's replace the value of the alert link hex color to the var link color what we do here is we create a variable link color within the alert danger block and it can be used anywhere within this closure and its variable is considered scope if we try to access this variable from the alert warning scope we'll get an error telling us that this variable is not defined why because 
the variable link caller is only accessible within the scope alert danger, but not outside of its scope. For that, we can create another variable link caller within the alert warning block. Now, which works? Cool. The other interesting thing about using variables is we are allowed to use multiple types like numbers. There we have just numbers, pixels, points, and percent. We have string as an example, an image URL path. We have some colors like this one we create when we use the hex value. We can also use the RGB presentation of a specific color like this one or the RGBA or the reserved color name. Let's return this danger 200 variable initial value to this hex color. We have also a booleans false or true. And for the last ones, we have lists and maps. They are a little bit complicated. We'll learn how to use them in the lists and maps lesson.